thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, my name is Caitlin Sylvester. I'm co-director of the NCCRT and welcome to the 2022 NCCRT um, annual meeting pre-session for the professional <coughs> education and practice implementation strategic priority team focused on health systems. Uh, we're so pleased you could join us today. And our hope is that this meeting, um, along with our in-person session on the 16th, will be a place where you can learn and have the opportunity to ask questions of our chairs, as well as your peers, as we work to tackle these important issues and help us ultimately achieve our goal of 80% in every community. So before we dive in, I just wanna quickly run through some housekeeping. I'd like mm -hmm. to remind you that this call is being recorded. It will also be posted um, on our website. So anyone who wants to receive some informational background on the PEPI Health Systems Group can access that. Um, we want this call to be as interactive and engaging as possible. So while I'm gonna ask you to put yourselves on mute now, um, I do encourage you to unmute and come on camera when, when asking a question. It's always helpful when we can see each other and interact. Um, we also have a chat feature on today's call. So if you can, if you're unable to come off of mute um, or wanna make a comment while someone else is speaking, please put any questions or comments in the chat box. Um, Yvonne and I will be monitoring that and we'll make sure to circle back. Um, so Yvonne, you can go to the next slide. Before we get started, um, we'd like to know who we have in the room. And um, since we have a small group, I think we can kind of quickly go around the horn and introduce ourselves. Again, I will start. My name is uh, Caitlin Sylvester. I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana, and I'm co-director of the NCCRT. And then we'd love to hear from you all. What is your favorite fall beverage? Um, mine currently is large quantities of coffee. So um, I'll pass to Yvonne, and then we'll move on to our chairs, uh, Dr. Colangelo and Dr. Yor. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yvonne Lopez. I am the program manager for NCCRT. And my favorite fall beverage would be hot apple cider. I really enjoy it. It's one of my favorite things. And I will pass it along to Dr. Colangelo. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Frank Colangelo. I'm an intern at the Premier Medical Associates in Pittsburgh that's part of the Allegheny Health Network. And my favorite fall beverage is anything that's not pumpkin flavored. I mean, I'm not into the pumpkin thing, so. Hi, my name is Xavier Yor. I'm a gastroenterologist at uh, Yale University. Um, and damn it, Frank, it's exactly the same with me. <laughs> Can't speak anywhere. So anyways, that's what it is. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> we can add that to our team charge if we want no pumpkin spice. Um, <laughs> next, we'll go to Emily and then Dory Lane. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I'm co-director of the NCCRT alongside Caitlin, and we're really excited to see so many of you in person um, in two weeks, which is very scary and very exciting. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I would have to say a hot cocoa, also not a pumpkin beverage person <laughs> or a sweet cider person. <laughs> And uh, next up, Demetria, would you like to share? Sure, thank you. I'm Demetria Tenefoss. I work in medical affairs at Garden Health. And so you probably are used to seeing Victoria Raymond, who is our medical affairs director, but I am filling in for her. Um, and I will be at NCCRT in person and in place of Victoria. And I'm located in Spokane, Washington. Great. We'll next go to Dory Lane and then Anne. Hi, I'm Dari Lane. Um, I'm from, uh, well, location-wise right now, I'm on Long Island. I'm actually a native New, New Yorker. Uh, I represent um, the American College of Preventive Medicine. That's the Specialty Society for Physicians in Public Health and Preventive Medicine. Uh, but I, you know, my real job is here on Long Island at the uh, medical school, the Renaissance School of Medicine at Stony Brook University. And I guess my favorite fall beverage is my favorite year round, but I don't really drink much of it. It's wine. <laughs> I was, it was really puzzled. What am I going to say? You know, water, that sounds too dull, but I, I do like white wine. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, we'll go Anne and then we'll go Allison. Okay, hi, I'm not sure, I'm on my phone, so I'm not sure if um, it's gonna show my video or not, but my name is Ann Long. I'm from Alina Health, uh, located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And um, 
Tessie Ross is my the director of care management and quality performance. So I think I may be invited because of uh, I'm filling in for her. And, you know, I am so grateful for the woman ahead of me who shared wine because I was like, how am I going to say Oktoberfest beer as my favorite fall beverage when everybody else is being so healthy? <laughs> but but there it is. Um, don't have it all often, but uh, it's something I look forward to every October. Wonderful. We'll go Allison and then Amy. Hi, I am Allison Rosen. Mm -hmm. I am from uh, Houston, Texas. I represent American Cancer Society, but also um, am a colorectal cancer survivor uh, serving on the NCCRT steering committee. Um, so I have sort of dual, dual roles, essentially. Um, my favorite fall beverage, um, chai tea latte. I'm basic. <laughs> I love it. All right, Amy. Hi, I'm Amy Wicker. Um, I work for Kettering Health in uh, Dayton, Ohio, um, but I'm actually attending the conference to represent the American Association of Medical Assistants. And uh, so we've done some partnership with, um, with uh, NCCRT. That's been uh, a good partnership. So I'm excited to, to attend. I'm the chair of our partnership committee this year, uh, this year going forward. So I'm attending with our CEO to the meeting, um, but I do work for Kettering Health and I'm the uh, network manager of ambulatory quality. So I work with um, our practices, primarily our independent practices within our CIN and our ACO um, on all their value-based performance. And of course, colorectal cancer screening is one of our big ones. Um, so I live and breathe that quality metrics every day. Uh, and uh, so my favorite fall beverage, I can't say alcohol because I'm the lucky one who developed an allergy to all alcohol, um, including, I can't even take NyQuil, full hives, full on hives, um, developed that like six years ago for some reason. Um, so I'll go with the basic, um, the pumpkin latte, you know, pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks. I still like that too. So, but I would like to do the wine if I could, but I can't. So <laughs> understandable. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll go Kassan, Sherry, Tamara, and then Vince. Hi, all. Good afternoon. I'm Pasang, uh, program manager for the University of Chicago Medicine Cancer Prevention Team. Uh, we primarily focus on a five-year CDC grant for uh, colorectal cancer screenings. Um, and I think I'm primarily stepping in for Vanessa Randall, um, the director, and Jermichia, um, also director of innovation. And my favorite fall beverage is also chai tea lattes. Thank you. Sherry and Hi. then Tamara and then Vince. Hi, I'm Sherry Stanley. I'm from the University of Virginia Cancer Center. I am the administrative coordinator of our colorectal cancer screening program. Really super excited to join in person, the conference this year. Uh, my favorite beverage has to be Starbucks pumpkin latte. So I guess I'm pretty standard. <laughs> We're a split group on this call. <laughs> Everyone, I'm Keeper Robinson um, and I am from the Nebraska Cancer Coalition. So I'm, I'm actually in Lincoln, Nebraska. We cover the entire state. Um, We'll be attending the conference in person. We get to present. It's exciting on our marketing campaign. Um, and favorite, I'm basic too. I just, I love lattes, but I'm sorry because I don't like the pumpkin stuff either. <laughs> don't like anything in mine. Just plain. All right, and I think last but not least is Vince. Um, good afternoon, um, Vince Wong. I'm the uh, Chief Commercial Officer of Genoscopy, uh, a venture-backed startup here in uh, St. Louis. Uh, we're developing the next generation of um, colorectal cancer screening tests um, that are RNA-based and uh, really excited to attend. Um, we sponsored last year, but we only attended virtually. Uh, so excited to, to attend uh, our first in-person uh, NCCRT meeting. So thank you. Great, well, we are so excited that all of you could join us today. Um, 
Next, I want to introduce what you heard um, from them previously a little bit about their dislike for pumpkin spice lattes, but um, doctors, Yvonne, if you could move to the next slide, doctors Colangelo and doctors Yor. And uh, Dr. Colangelo, I believe you'll be kicking us off next. Hey, next slide, Yvonne. And you can hear me okay. I was having some laptop troubles. Good. Okay, thank you. All righty. So I wanted to go over our objectives for today's meeting. So we're number one going to share why the NCCRT has strategic priority teams and their importance to our work in the 80% by every, in every community campaign. We want to share some history and a brief overview of the professional practice and practice implementation PEPI health system strategic priority team. So that's a mouthful if you have to say it all together. And we want to highlight our goals for the in-person session, which is going to be held on November 16th. And we want to answer any questions that you have at the end of our presentation today. So next slide, please. So we'd like to start by sharing our overview of the 80% in every community campaign. Because of this campaign, which is built off the success of the 80% by 2018 campaign, the NCCRT is committed to reaching 80% or higher CRC screening rates across all communities in the United States. It's through collective action and dedication of our partners that we're working to substantially reduce colorectal cancer as a major public health problem. We plan to achieve this goal through building capacity in communities, catalyzing healthcare systems on this work, mobilizing the public's touch points, and breaking down policy barriers. If you would like to learn more, I encourage you to review the 80% in every community strategic plan on the NCCRT website. And Yvonne is going to post the link to the plan in the chat box. So you can see it right, or I'm sorry, Caitlin just posted it. So. Thank you. Next slide. Is Javier right. gonna take, yes. Thank you, Frank. So um, just reviewing a little bit, um, those were changes that happened a couple of years ago. We, uh, went, we moved from task groups to what now we call the strategic priority uh, teams. And, uh, and the, the overall idea of uh, moving toward this new system was really responding better to the needs of NCCRT, and that's why that happened. And those uh, different strategic priority, priority teams, which there are six of them, they really uh, uh, have to uh, align with the focus areas that the NCCRT has identified, which would be assess and build capacity in communities, mobilize at public uh, touch points, catalyze healthcare uh, systems, and break down policy barriers. In our case, we really, really, uh, um, the uh, PEPI health systems really uh, align with our priorities with the catalyze. Uh, Analyzing healthcare systems by capitalizing on colorectal cancer screening opportunities, education, and awareness uh, within the healthcare systems. This is important uh, um, to our mission because we know healthcare systems, facilities, providers, and staff can all have a huge impact on screening rates in their communities. Healthcare organizations provide community leadership and identify and address barriers to screening. And, and healthcare organizations can really implement evidence-based interventions that will improve our national and local uh, screening rates. If we can um, move to the next slide. So um, as we mentioned, that change happened a couple of years ago. And really the purpose of, uh, of these strategic priority teams is uh, promote dialogue around emerging topics and areas of interest of NCCRT in, an, in a nimble way, develop project ideas that are related to our priority areas to really respond to those priorities, um, identify topics for NCCRT low star conversations, um, have uh, members participate in advisory committees for projects generated from these interest areas, really making sure that people can actually, uh, part, of these, uh, um, um, part of these groups can, uh, individuals from these groups can participate in uh, other activities too, depending on uh, the level of expertise and interest. Uh, so we don't make it like silo, uh, uh, silo systems, but actually something that uh, allows us for, for this fluidity and assist with dissemination of resources and relevant information, definitely identify opportunities uh, to promote the work of the um, NCC. Those are really um, uh, very, very um, important uh, um, goals with that, uh, with those changes. So basically, um, 
those are the changes. We really want to create the space to generate fresh conversations and emerging uh, topics, allow us to have better focus on NCC project work. Um, uh, also help us identify new leaders uh, that can uh, contribute to the NCCRT at, at a different level, which often uh, sometimes it's a little bit difficult and, and we want to make sure that people can get and self-identify and really uh, uh, get new leaders uh, who can take things forward. And uh, we can also more easily sunset priority areas as needed. So at the end of the day, really making these more um, useful for the NCCRT goals and, uh, and uh, so we can all um, achieve what we are uh, set to. We'll come up to the next slide. So I'll take back again. So we look forward to seeing you and others at the annual meeting, the NCCR team at annual meeting, which is being held at the Sheraton Inner Harbor Hotel in Baltimore, Maryland, beginning two weeks from today on November 16th. And the meeting of this PEPI Health System Catalyzing Committee will be between 3.30 and 5 o'clock Eastern time. And the room that it'll be held is still to be determined. That'll be in the meeting agenda that we'll share with you closer to the meeting. But We'll all be getting together and uh, you know, look forward to seeing all of you there. And just wanted to emphasize for the next slide. In 2021, the NCCRT established their three priority areas for colorectal cancer screening and care. And this was just recently updated by key members of the NCCRT steering committee. And there are three priority areas for this upcoming year. And we plan to frame all of our conversations around these topics when we get together in two weeks and thereafter. We want to, number one, mobilize national and community level efforts that will lead to health equity in colorectal cancer screening. We want to support on time screening as soon as eligible and continued participation in screening recommendations. So if someone's told they need to follow up in three years or five years or 10 years, that they continue their on-time screening going forward. And we wanna promote timely colonoscopy follow-up to positive or abnormal non-colonoscopy tests, whether that's CT colonography or stool-based testing. So again, everything that we do, we're going to hope to frame our conversation around those topics. So what is our charge, our team charge here? This one is to identify and share promising implementation strategies by healthcare organizations to help clinicians and practice teams to improve colorectal cancer screening rates. This is the team charge, and that that's what our conversation is about. And and uh, towards uh, this upcoming year, uh, these are the objectives. The one is to identify and share implementation strategies to increase colorectal cancer screening. We want to find success stories. Um, we want to, um, and some of them can be uh, uh, in your institutions, but you may also know of uh, stories from other institutions that have been successful. We just need to hear them all and see what we can, uh, uh, how we can uh, um, uh, make those uh, stories uh, applicable to other uh, uh, places and environments. Understand the role of different players in order to accomplish those goals and also identify strategies that can actually be shared that we can all um, apply to the, our own um, healthcare systems. We want to develop project ideas, focus on health system implementation strategies. And we also want to promote ongoing dialogue and that's key. That's how we are just gonna make things happen. Uh, we uh, engaging in that continued dialogue so we can uh, keep fine tuning our ideas and our projects. Um, the expectations are that uh, really we want to hear from everyone. Um, everyone in the room today and on 16th has a lot to say and, and uh, a lot of good experiences. We just we need to have an open, open conversation and make sure people share um, those um, uh, experiences. And uh, with that, we want to leave with a couple of two or three identified activities that we want to do for the upcoming year that really uh, uh, take us to a different level, to, to, to a higher level um, and of understanding of what we can do at the health uh, um, care systems to increase colorectal cancer screening rates. We want you to allow to, to really engage and interact with everyone. We want to, again, make sure people share thoughts, get feedback, and, and also we really like for people to be ready to volunteer and in and taking the lead or helping with these projects that we may want to identify for the upcoming year to really um, help us uh, move forward. 
And so to this, um, to this um, we will, uh, uh, Yvonne, I think is uh, gonna be uh, posting that Google form link where you can start um, uh, really sharing uh, some of these ideas that will really help us shape the uh, agenda for uh, uh, for the uh, upcoming meeting on the scheme. Uh, uh, we can move to the next slide. Uh, so when it comes to uh, how uh, how we are going to be successful, what we think is um, would make these uh, um, activities around the uh, uh, Pepe Healthcare Systems Group, well, uh, in general, we want for this to be collaborative. We, so we're going to engage multiple member organizations, require multi-sectorial partnerships. Uh, that is how we were, uh, think we're going to be successful. We, we want to respond to the mission of the NCCRT, obviously, and the priority focus of task of the task groups uh, with that uh, strategy that we all share through the NCCRT uh, main strategy. We definitely need to be impactful uh, and, and impact means that we should one way or another be able to measure that impact and, and, and say, yeah, we have been successful uh, through that. That sometimes is challenging in some of the activities that we do, but I think it's important that we find ways to really measure that success because that's really what uh, can inform us in the future activities. Uh, it has to be feasible uh, the, and within a time frame that's reasonable. And, and we would like to look at this as, as uh, a year ahead. So thinking about 12 uh, uh, months, something uh, uh, from, uh, from the meeting on until next time that we meet, we want it um, uh, be workable within the limits of the, of the NCCRT staff. Very, very important. We, often come up with great ideas, grandiose ideas that require so much effort from the staff that really they just don't have the capacity uh, to really carry on. So we really have to be very mindful about that. It's very important that we understand we, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the environment and the, and the capacity that we have. And, and one of the critical aspects is our, uh, our staff and, and the load of work that they already have, which is tremendous to start with. And um, and uh, we're we're always aiming for the lowest budget as possible. I think we're that's kind of like the the mantra. But there's uh, <laughs> there are opportunities that if the projects require some funding and they are deemed to be of interest, there may be some funding uh, behind those. So, but being mindful that. Um, uh, we have to be as nimble as possible. They have to be equitable. Uh, we need to address barriers to screening in underserved communities. That's a commitment that we had for the longest time and we need to keep that. They have to be novel. We, we then um, need to duplicate or replicate existing pro, uh, projects. To, but we can certainly um, use, and, and, uh, and it is very important to use some models to really, it's like, uh, how can we really make them better? Um, they have to be member supported, so um, there should be opportunity for the NCCRT members to contribute with time, with funding, with expertise, you name it, to support the development, implementation, dissemination, and evaluation of the project. And, and sustainability is also critically important. That's been an issue that we had, uh, we've been stumbling on, particularly, I think, within the NCCRT is like, how can we make some of the projects that are really making a huge difference, how can we make them sustainable that actually uh, um, people can implement them without that uh, the need for 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 grants that go away and things like that. I think that's something that's critical, and we really uh, I would encourage everyone to think of from from that standpoint because we need for those ideas to be uh, sustainable and and make sure that they become part of what what our healthcare system. Well, all right. Well, if no one has any additional questions or comments, I think we can wrap. Thank you so much to our chairs, uh, Drs. Frank Colangelo and Xavier Yor. We are so excited to see everyone in person in two weeks and um, safe travels. And we look forward to seeing you in Baltimore.